Hello there, how can you use a graph in Java? If you are watching this video, my guess is that you learn the graph data structure, however, you are not sure how you can use a graph in Java or how can you implement it. In this video, I will show you how you can use the graph data structure to find a path that will take a delivery track from point A to point B. Usually, the graph data structure is used to represent relationship between objects. It can be used to represent a social network, a telephone network, or in this case, we are going to use it to navigate a delivery area. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Here is how the video is going to be organized. First, I will explain the problem that we will be solving using a data structure. Next, we will see how we are going to organize the code in classes and methods. Next, we will see how you can convert a matrix into a graph data structure. And last, we will see how to write an algorithm that will use the previous created graph to find the route to the destination for the delivery track. Alright, so let's start by taking a closer look at the problem. So imagine a delivery service company that wants to create a system that will plan the route for a delivery truck to deliver a customer order. The planner system will create a delivery area for each order, which is going to be abstracted in a matrix. Our job is to create an algorithm that will find a path for the truck to deliver the order. Let's talk a bit more about the delivery area. We are going to extract it as a matrix of integers. And here, if the cell is 1, it means that the area is accessible. If the cell is 0, it's me, it means that it's not accessible. And if the cell is 2, it means that the track reached its destination. So let's see an example. Imagine that we have the following delivery area. To solve this problem and being able to navigate the matrix, we will be using a graph data structure. This problem is a great example of how using the correct data structure can massively simplify an algorithm. In this case, if you don't use a graph, your solution will probably become a lot more complicated. Ok, so let's see one example. So, for instance, if we have the following delivery area where the cell 00 is accessible, then the next one to it is accessible as well, one to one is accessible, and then we have the destination. So, in this case, the output of our algorithm should be 00, zero then cell 01, then cell 11, and then cell 12, which is the destination. Alright, so now that we understand the problem we are trying to solve, let's see how we are going to organize the code. We will create a class cell to represent each of the cells in the matrix with a row and column. And we will have a class that we are going to call delivery area, which is going to do two things. Given a matrix, it will convert it to a graph data structure. And to do so, this class is going to have a method called buildGraph. And then we will have another method called findRoot, which will find a path from the star position, which is 00, zero to the destination. So let's write this in Java. First, I will create a class cell. And this class will have two fields, the row and the column and it's going to have a constructor as well. And additionally, we are going to create a class delivery area, which is going to have as data the input matrix representing the delivery area. And this class is going to have a constructor as well. And it's going to have a method called build graph which will return a map of strings and list of cells. So this means that our graph 
is going to be represented in Java as a map where the key is going to be a stream and each of these strings is going to be associated with a list of cells. And we're going to have another method called findRoot, which will return a list of cells to indicate the path between 00, zero and the destination. All right, so we have seen how the code is going to be organized. So let's start by seeing how we can convert the matrix into a graph data structure. As I said before, our graph will be a map using a string type as the key and then list of cells as the value. And it will look like the following. In this example, the cell 00, zero is connected to the cell 0, 01. So that means that the cell have only one adjacent node, which is 0, 01. Next, we can look at the cell 0, 01, which has two connected nodes or adjacent nodes, 00, 0 and it also and it's also connected to 1, 1 and so on for the other nodes. So, what are the steps we should follow to build the graph in this way? We will loop through every cell in the matrix, and if the cell is 1, it means it's accessible. So we will look at the four cells around, so the cell above, the cell below, right and left, and if any of those is 1 as well, it means that the nodes are connected, so we will add those nodes to the cell of adjacent nodes for that given node. Alright, so let's try this in Java. First, I will create the map that will contain our graph data structure. And I will use two for loops to scan each cell. Now I will check if the cell is equal to 1. Now I'm going to create a variable called current cell, which will contain the cell where we are positioned at the moment. A small note here, since we are using a string as the key in the hash map, we need to convert the cell to a string that identifies the cell in a unique way. So I'm going to add a method in the cell class to do that. So I'm going to call the method has key and it will return a key concatenating the row and the column. For this case, this is enough. Um, so please note that every cell should be uniquely identified by this key, which means that you can have two cells in the matrix with the same key. Now let's go back to building the graph. Since we are going to add our cell to the graph, I'm going to create a cell has key for the current cell using the function I just created. And now I will say if the current node doesn't exist already in the graph, I will add it with an empty list. And this is just to ensure that we are not overwriting stuff. Now I will get all the connected nodes by doing graph.get and then the current has key. You could avoid doing this and just create a new list. So please, once you understand how to build a graph, feel free to do as many improvements as you like. So now we are going to work out the connected nodes to a given node. It's important here to make sure that we are not out of the borders or the limits. In other words, the limits of our matrix. Let's see an example of how to achieve this step by step. Imagine the following matrix and we are in cell row 0 and column 0. First, we will check the cell above. So we will do row minus 1 and the same column. But what happens if the cell is out of the matrix? 
How would you know that? Because the row, which in this case is 0 minus 1, is less than 0, which is the first column. So let's check the cell on the left. So we will use the same row and then do column minus 1. And then I will check that the column minus 1 is bigger than 0. And that will tell us that that column is inside the matrix. To check the cell below, we will do row plus 1 and same column. And to check the right cell, we will use same, co same row and column plus 1. Perfect. Let's write this in Java. So if row minus 1 is bigger or equal to 0, then we are within the limits. And then I need to check if the row is accessible. And if so, I will add it to the list of adjacent nodes. To check the cell on the left, I will say if column minus 1 is bigger or equal to 0. And also I will check if the cell is accessible. And if so, I will add it to the list. And so on for the other two cells. And at the end, I will return the graph um, and that's all. So we just seen how to build the graph data structure. So now the next question is how we are going to use it to find the route to our destination. So let's go to the find route function. And um, first, we are going to see how the algorithm is going to work step by step. First, we are going to create three variables. One is going to be called current cell, which will keep track of where we are in the graph. Then another variable called already visit, which is going to be a list to keep track of the nodes that we have visited. And then another variable called final path, which will be the path that we will return at the end. So I will start in cell 00, and I will add this to the already visit and to the final path. And now, where shall I go from here? To a node that is connected and, we, and it hasn't been visited already. So I will get the node that is connected to 00, and the first one is 0. Is one zero. So this will be the current cell now and I will add it to the already visit and to the final path list. So where do I go from here? I'm kind of stuck because the only node connected is 00, zero which has already been visited. So this means I have to go back. To do so, I will go to the already visit list and instead of grabbing the last item, I will grab the item right after, before. So instead of grabbing the last item, I will get the item that is right before. So this means I will take a step back. And since the last node is not going to be part of the final path, I will remove it. Okay, so I'm back in cell 00. zero. So the next node will be 0, 01, uh, since it's connected and it hasn't been visited yet. So I will add it to already visit and also to the final path. And then I will go to cell 0, 02. And since this is the destination, the algorithm will stop here and the final path will be 00, 00, 01 and 02. So this is the strategy we are going to follow. Move from one connecting node to another and go back if we get stuck in a path that doesn't lead to a destination. Now let's write this in Java. I will create the variable current cell, which is going to be 00. zero. Then I will create a list of the visit nodes and I will add also 00, zero to that list. 
and then another list for the final pass notes and I will also add 00, zero to that list and now I will say while I haven't reached the destination meaning that the current cell is not two I will do a few things first I will figure out the next node where I should move and we will do this in a bit in a different function and uh, so for this I will create a variable and I'm gonna leave it as null and this variable is gonna be called next node to move now if the next node to move is null it means that we don't have anywhere to go so we are stuck so I will go back meaning that the current cell will be already visit dot get and then the size of the already visit list minus two and this will grab the previous node that we visit and then I will remove the node from the final path if we find a node to move then I will mark this node as visit by adding the node to the list and I will also add the next node to the final path and then assign it to the current cell. Perfect, so the only bit left is look at how we are going to work out the next node where we should move. For that, I'm going to create another method which I will call find next accessible cell which will take as argument the graph then the current cell and the already visit list and it will return a cell type so here we need to find a node that is connected to the current node and that we haven't visited already so I will get all the adjacent nodes for the current node loop through them and for each I will check if it already exists in the visit node list and if it's not visit then it means that we can visit it so I will return this cell and otherwise I will return null and that's all we just completed the algorithm to find a delivery route Perfect, I have created a small test so we can test this. So let's say that we have that the following matrix and in this case the path should be 0, 0, then 0, 1 and then 0, 2. So I will create a delivery area and then I will call the find root function that we just created and check that the resulting path is the same as the one that we expect so let's run this and amazing the test is working and the track has found a way to its destination all right we reached the end of this tutorial where we have seen an example of how to use a graph data structure in java in this case we use the graph to find a path in a matrix from point A to point B. I hope that you find this video useful and I will see you in the next one.